Featherly. I'm broker co-owner of Town Center Realty Group right here in Burbank, California. Welcome to our February 2020 broadcast. Today we have a variety of topics starting out with an interview with Elisa Johnston and she's going to be talking about cybersecurity. Darren Chase will then join us on a little discussion about the state of the commercial market. Then we're going to have Cindy Bost here and if you remember from our last broadcast we're going to be discussing our charity event this month for the Burbank Animal Shelter. Then we're going to have a roundtable discussion with Cindy and also Linda Smith and they're going to be giving us their thoughts on how the current real estate market is for residential. And then we're going to finish up with a house tour of Peter Michael Chuck's listing at 514 East Harvard Road right here in Burbank. So please stay tuned. guest today is Alyssa Johnston and she is a rep who has some information for us about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity in real estate transactions lately is huge. So she's going to just kind of give us a few ins and outs and things that you need to look for because as a buyer of real estate and a seller of real estate, you're going to be transferring money and most of these uh, transfers are going to be done by wire transfer and there's just a huge amount of fraud. So uh, Alyssa, what can you tell us about this? Well first of all Susan, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I have a few tips, a few things to look out for. So mainly hackers are going to try to pose as real estate agents or title agents. So they're going to be sending you emails and they could change in the email actual um, address. They could change a letter to a number or there's um, a period where it shouldn't be. So it's really important to look out for that. Always make sure that it's the right sender. And if you're questionable at all, call the number on a trusted number that you have for that client or for that person and yeah. make sure that they emailed you. Yeah, that's what we always tell our clients when they're getting ready to do that wire transfer and they get the email from escrow. Make sure we talk first to make sure that they're calling the correct phone number and they can verify the information. Don't call the number that's on the email. Yeah, don't call that Because, one. you know, it, it is amazing too because I've seen samples of this mm -hmm. and it, they really everything looks so like it's coming from the correct escrow company except for maybe the logo will be like stretched out just right. a little bit or the font will be different or you the know, L just, is a one it, it's yeah. something so small so, that everyone so misses. easy exactly it so really is. we've actually had an issue with this mm -hmm. one of the agents in the office had a client who was getting ready to close escrow uh, they were a seller so they were gonna get about three to four hundred thousand dollars back from the sale of their property the clients eating lunch and and he gets a phone call from escrow and they just wanted to verify uh, the routing number that was submitted to them and he's like well what do you t what do you need that for and they said you know so we can do the wire transfer and he's like uh, I was gonna stop and pick up the check and they're like well we just talked to you and you said that you were gonna you know do a wire, wire transfer yeah. and he's like you know that was not me and when we looked through the emails and everything that's exactly what it was you had like a little something they were was, posing as mm -hmm. someone else and it's always right at the time I don't know how they know but it's perfect timing it's right when it's about to close mm -hmm. right when everything needs to be in order and they're about to send the money in and I have a similar story that I've heard before but they didn't catch it unfortunately and oh, the person no. ended up being out 200 grand couldn't buy the house that they were totally looking forward to buy all because they got an email and they sent the money to the wrong person. Oh wow. So there's no like insurance or anything that covers this, no, is there? No, because we can't do anything, you know, you sent the money on your own to another email account or to another person and it's completely out of our control. So all we're going to do is try to make, you know, spread awareness right. so this doesn't happen again, right. you know, and just always change your passwords because hackers are out there too, so always be on top of that. 
have a different password for every single account you have. And probably password isn't really a good yeah, password. Yeah, don't, don't do password one or like your name or your kid's <laughs> name or something. I must say, I've been guilty of that on certain accounts. If it's an account that really doesn't mean anything, right. I mean, I have done that, but you know, we really shouldn't be stupid like that. No, and one account, they, if they get into one account, it really makes it easier for them to get into every other account you have. Okay, so I'm changing that immediately yeah. right now. Melissa, make sure that I change my password, <laughs> password, right. not password, password anymore. Password, you're all going to hack you out watching this video. <laughs> It's but really it's, sad, you know, though. It's so hard, though, with passwords because, I mean, as a real estate agent, we have so many different accounts, and they all require a different, different password. password. And I swear to God, I'm, like, screaming sometimes in my computer because Me it's like too. I don't know what the freaking password is. And you don't want, like, 50 Post-it notes around your exactly. computer with every <laughs> so every password. Can see your password. It's ridiculous. I it have is. a notes page on my phone where I keep all of them. Yeah, you have to do that. You really, you really do. But that's just some of the things that we are in for in today's society. So what careful. else? Is there anything else? I mean, not really. You just have to really be careful. Always call. Make sure that it's the person sending. Like, it's okay to be overprotective of this situation. Like, don't be nervous. Just call them. Nobody's going to, like, you don't have to be embarrassed. You're like, is this you? Like, better yeah. safe than well, sorry. Plus, everybody should be calling at this yeah. point. Yeah. It's huge. It's <laughs> You'd be major. an idiot if you're not calling. And so. it's not just real estate. It's everywhere. Everywhere is hacking and posing as things. You know, I went to a store to go buy a dress. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is the dress. It says it's a different price online. And she was like, look at the website. There's a period there. They're posing to oh be us. God. They're like, we've been having so many people come in being like, your prices are different. But I see the dress right here. And it's not them. It's a different oh, wow. website trying to like steal their clients. And they don't actually deliver the dresses. Oh, no. So you think it's this brand and it's not. So it's just happening everywhere. Just be safe, guys. Look out. Be extra careful. Careful. It's really all you can do. All right. Well, thanks so much for the information, and we hope everybody found that helpful. Yeah. We don't know what our house is worth. Let me help you with your pricing strategy. The paper is winning! I organize sales contracts for breakfast. Really? I heard bacon cookies would attract buyers. I'll handle the staging. The best offer is out here somewhere. If I only had a prepared comp evaluation, let's do this. California real estate comes with a lot of questions. The first one should be, who's your realtor? And we're back with our commercial broker, Darren Chase. And today we are gonna talk about the commercial real estate market and kind of where it is right now and where it's headed. Thanks, Susan. Um, I'm going to focus more on the industrial side market. I'll touch on the commercial a little bit, but I'll want to stick more industrial because okay. I think what's happening in that market right now is is very, very dramatic for, for Southern California. Um, the availability of uh, a suitable space for people is, is at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. um, there's been no significant building anywhere in the valley and in, in many downtown LA places. So everybody wants to be in Los Angeles where they want to be in Rebecca somewhere in the valley and it just really drives up the competition for these properties and mm -hmm. uh, the valley has a lot of older industrial property and so you when you have somebody looking for maybe a little higher ceilings or or a little bit extra parking um, those somewhat newer and when I say newer 20 years right and 20 year old you know, you know built developments um, yeah, you see in some of the newer, like say you go up towards maybe San Crater or down in Orange yeah, County, they yeah. have a lot of newer builds, so it's not... There's not just, there's just a lot of, of that in the valley is missing right now. And at one point, those properties were leasing for 50 cents and a dollar a square foot. They're over $2 a square foot right now. Oh, wow. And there seems to be no one in sight for that. They're, the demand for them is just uh, very, very heated. Even here in Burbank, in a project I'm working on right now, an older 50-year-old building, um, we've got three offers on it now. Oh, great. And all um, willing to not ask for concessions in order to get the property. So owners are able to can command higher prices, not have to give concessions to get the property not leased. Not even like a free month rent or? They'll lease them even without that. Wow. But in order to try to make a client feel good and, and, and have a good working relationship with the lessee who you could have for three to five years, I always recommend you know at least give a month. Yeah. on a three-year deal or in a five-month deal you know you can simply make the lease instead of 60 months make it 62 give them two months free and collect your two months free in the back end right oh that's a good idea yeah, yeah that commercial really market is front. yeah the commercial market is also very tight for your your c1 c2 properties but it's not as much because there's just more more of that has been built 
Uh, what I do find amazing, though, is the demand for standalone commercial, mm -hmm. or say standalone retail that people want, uh, which again is extremely short supply since it doesn't even make economic sense to build one little box right. for a commercial right. or retail building anymore. So overall, the markets are very competitive and very tight, and I think it's um, very important for a broker to understand their client's needs. You have to be able to explain to them and you need to be able to do it in a very assured and confident manner that this is the one you need to get. Right. Um, don't lose this property over 10 cents a square foot and then be left with <laughs> with, with some junk stuff right. that, you, that you're gonna say no to. Right, because eventually if they you know, can't get what they want originally because they're trying to hold out for too many concessions or yeah. hold out for a better price, they're gonna end up settling for something. Well, they'll lose. That, yeah. They'll absolutely lose, lose on what they want. They'll right. lose out completely and then they'll be in some place that they never wanted to be in. Right, so I don't know, I don't really see any end to this in the near future, do no, you? No, no I don't. There's just more people coming to California um, and, and to want to do work, uh, despite um, how bad uh, California is tax-wise. Um, I don't see any change in continued demand. Yeah, well, we're kind of in like a crisis right now. And later today, I'm actually, in our discussion, we're going to be talking with some residential agents basically really about the same thing, about the issues that we're facing, and they're pretty parallel to what you face as well. Yeah, so. yeah, I've talked to them as well, and, and, and I would agree to, certain, to a certain extent. Yeah. All right, well, not all that wonderful, but thank you for that. Well, it's a great market. <laughs> it's just very tight. And it's, it's great to be a landlord. Yes, it is. So, all right, well, thanks so much, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Cindy Bost, and again, she was with us last month. She's the head of our charity committee, and this is my beautiful little baby little bear. Did you smile, little bear? No, probably not. She's a little <laughs> camera shy, and I'm shedding all over my outfit. But anyhow, we're here again to talk about our charity for the Burbank Animal Shelter. Cindy, tell us about it. Okay, so if you have not gotten one of these bags on your porch, give us a call, 818-572-5273, or 818-726-7007, or 818-848-2888, mm -hmm. and we'll drop one off. And Susan, I have good news for you. I picked up our first bag today. Oh, are you serious? Yes. Someone called? Yes, on <laughs> Reese Place, and they were so sweet. They have a little cute little shit zoo um, named Nala, and they gave us a bunch of stuffed blankets, toys, papers um, and dog biscuits. Oh, that's so exciting. So yes. we have our first pickup on Saturday and then again the following Saturday and yours is on the 22nd, right? Yes. The following Saturday. Okay, yeah. all right, uh -huh. great. Yeah. Well, we will keep everyone posted and again, if we don't hit your neighborhood and you want to contribute to the animal shelter, give us a call and whatever you have, I mean, really, they mm -hmm. need like blankets and even newspapers, food, treats, anything you have, you know, they really appreciate it. So if you have something, give us a call or just drop it off at our, off at our office. We're at 539 North Glen Oaks Boulevard in Burbank, 91502, and we're in uh, Suite 101. Yes, so. and um, the food will be dropped off at the Burbank Animal Shelter, but we also give some to the feral cat feeders in Burbank mm -hmm. and some other charities in Burbank that can use our help. Right, but, so yeah, yeah, we appreciate any help that you can give us, so thanks so much, and we'll be right back.
we're back, and now we're joined by not only Cindy, but also another veteran agent, Linda Smith. So say hi, Linda. Hello. Yay. All right, so today we're going to have kind of a round table or square table discussion, I guess it would be, on basically the state of the real estate market. Now, it's not good. I mean, it's very difficult right now. Yeah, so, inventory but, is low. Yeah. There is no inventory. You want now, to sell your house, I can sell it now. <laughs> exactly. Probably like put the yes. sign out and it'll sell if it's if it's still priced correctly. They still, yeah. homes have to be priced correctly. Now I know that um, the past, I remember a year ago, we were all panicking because there were only 80 single family homes for sale. Like, oh my God, there's only 80. Today, we had 29 single family homes and about mm -hmm. 11 or 12 condos, right? Yeah, a total of, of properties out there was 47 today. Yeah, and that's all price ranges. I mean, that's really yeah. unbelievably low. So, so. And, and this doesn't mean that you can sell your house for way more than it's worth because it still has to appraise. It does. So we it has to be priced correctly, and I have noticed that people are that are putting their prices too high, they're still going unnoticed because you guys know the market. Yeah, right? that's true. And you know, other than just pricing the property correctly, I noticed another issue lately are commissions. Um, a lot of people think they don't need to pay the commission and they're offering a low commission. And you know, with so little inventory, most agents are having a lot fewer sales. And if you're at a low commission, no one's gonna show your home. It's yeah. just. Um, yes. Actually, I ran some figures on that. There are four houses out there that have been on the market 120 days or more. Wow. Actually, 125 is the most recent one. They're running all the way to 225 days on the market. And every one of them is an out-of-area agent from mm -hmm. outside our area. And they're all on the lower half of the commission. They're trying to compete with Red Bin and Purple Brick or whoever. Or and the houses are not selling. And I feel really bad for those people because they should have sold. Right. And they are not getting seen and properly marketed because, because of, of their commissions. Yeah. Right, because what people tend to think is they're going to make more money if they pay less commission. And you know what, really the opposite is true because if you have a good property and it's priced okay, if you're offering a decent paycheck to the, to the agent, they'll show your home because there's nothing to show. Yeah. Right. Like, like uh, multi-residential, there's only but two or three properties right now in the right. multi-residential market. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to make sure you're priced correctly and you are going to be paying the agent's commission because you, you need an agent, come on. Yeah. There's so many lawsuits out there and this is the biggest investment of pretty much most people's lives. And you really need somebody who knows what they're doing to take care of it and knows how to price it. Yeah. In the residential income, there's actually five properties on the market in Burbank. Mm -hmm. Three of them are units with ADUs, or houses with right. ADUs. Unfortunately for those people trying to sell their house and using that ADU as a selling point, their agent didn't list it properly in the MLS. Right. And as an agent for a buyer looking for that, I had to really hunt to find those houses with the ADUs. Right. Um, and I feel bad for them. But that's what happens when you've been in the market for a while. A while, right. <laughs> uh, for you know ADU is accessory dwelling unit, and it's very popular right now in the Los Angeles communities because we have so little space right now overcrowded and just having be able to add another unit or, or reconvert your garage yeah. into additional yeah. housing are very popular right yeah. now. But it's not a duplex. No, it's yes. not. Yes, so. ADUs are, are guest houses, guest right. houses, granny flats, granny, granny flats, flat, stuff right. like that. So that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and it's you know a lot of families we're seeing now are adopting the European lifestyle, and the children are living at home. The grandparents are coming mm -hmm. to home, and those ADUs are a great oh. help for that because if you've got grandma in the back. She can watch the kids, maybe, right. or she doesn't have to worry about going up and down stairs or being by herself. Right. She's with the family. Yeah, no, really, that is a huge advantage by allowing to have those those ADUs right yeah. now, and especially with housing so expensive at the moment, it, it, especially younger people, it's very difficult to get your foot in the door right. when the beginner price point is nine hundred thousand. I mean, it's just you know ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what where where are you guys seeing the average household right now? What is the average home for single family? But price wise, that price wise, uh, turning into eight hundred thousand. Yeah, you know it, there are some that are more, but a single 
family, Even like a average. two bedroom, one bath is going for close to 800. We sold one for 900 last year, 850 square feet, 900,000. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I sold one very close to that, but it was in a special neighborhood with yeah. a special desire. The grandparents, again, the family moving closer together, the grandparents lived on the next street and the properties practically backed up to each other. So it was a value to them. Right. But right now the rates are really good if they're 3.62. Oh they're incredible. Right. You know? Incredible. Why so not there's buy? tons of buyers right now who are ready to buy because they have this incredible yeah. interest rate. But because there's so low inventory, it's just very difficult to buy. Yeah. So would you guys have any advice for buyers I, right now? I have advice for sellers. Okay. Um, you're seeing a lot of commercials about we buy houses and stuff like that. If you decide to call one of those, please call one of us also because they are buying mm -hmm. the houses way below market and you still are having to pay a commission and if you would have went through a traditional realtor yeah. like us or agent like us we could still get you more money so just at least well they try technically us. still charge a commission but it's a service fee it's a service and fee, not right. a commission so and it's usually at the beginning no right yeah they say there's no commission but there's a service fee which right. sometimes are like seven and eight percent yeah, yeah. So. it runs up by, by the time they add all their fees and right. their processes and you're not getting the exposure because right. they in turn most of the time are not offering the commission rate that's current for the market. Right. They're discounting the commission on the buyer side. Right. And, that's and it's ruining your neighborhood too. Right. Because your values are low. Because it's yeah. it's if if somebody did it next door to you and you sell your house, it might not appraise because they might have to pull that value. Right. Uh, yeah, from the house they stole last homes. night. Right. Stole next door, excuse right. me. Yeah. Yes. So I mean if you're thinking of selling really it's the perfect storm right now all right you've got mm -hmm. low interest rates so you've got lots of buyers you've got no inventory so you have you know hardly any competition and prices are really high right now so i really couldn't imagine in the 15 years i've been doing real estate that there's been a more perfect time to sell right. yes it's I, a perfect you know, storm i do mm -hmm. senior a lot of senior uh residential uh sellers and stuff for people and if you're a senior and you're thinking of relocating because of tax yeah. <laughs> and whatever is going on, um, now's a good time because the rates are low. Buyers can qualify for more with these lower rates, and you can take your equity and run. Yeah, I know. That's what I would do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Don't> call me. <laughs> yes. So if you are thinking of buying or selling, you can contact Cindy at 818 Five seven two five two seven three or Linda at eight one eight four seven two zero zero nine zero. Great. Well, thank you for joining me, ladies, and we look forward to another discussion in the future. Oh, thank thank you. you. We'll be right back. who happens to be my partner and he is joining us at our listing at 514 East Harvard Road in Burbank. Good afternoon my name is Peter I'm with Town Center Realty Group I'm the half of Peter and Susan team in Burbank California our property here is our new listing it consists of a front house a rear house a nice swimming pool and a detached two-car garage now the garage could be made into a ADU or guest unit, providing the city of Burbank gives you the approval. To go over our property, our front home consists of three bedrooms, two full baths, central heating and air conditioning, and lots of updates. Our front home consists of 1,518 square feet. The lot size for this particular property is 7,884 square feet. 
the rear home is approximately 750 to 800 square feet and consists of two bedrooms, one bath, lots of upgrades, granite countertops in the kitchen, tandem parking for two cars coming down the alley side of this property, which has its own address and electric security gates. For any other information on this wonderful property, feel free to call Peter or Susan at either 818-726-7007 or 818-823-7445. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks, Peter. And here's the video. Interested in seeing the property at 514 East Harvard Road? Give Peter a call at 818-726-7007. Here's some more of our great listings. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next month.